My name is Linda Leclerc and I'm the founder of the Haha Sisterhood and of the School of Laughter Yoga. Welcome in the Joy Element, the feel-good podcast that inspires. This episode today is brought to you by Let's Laugh, Laughter Exercises, the app that helps you laugh where and when you need it. <laughs> I am in awe with the great talent of this young woman, Nisha Coleman. Nisha and I first met through a friend who introduced me to her as a translator. I immediately liked her energy and vibe. A few weeks prior to us meeting, I found out that Nisha had just published a book, Buskers. So there was another reason to meet physically, because I wanted to get it. It was lots of fun to read, by the way. Meet Nisha Coleman, an inspiring storyteller. Well, hello, guys. We're in a... A noisy coffee place today, and it's a real thrill for me to be spending this time with uh, Nisha Coleman. She's a beautiful, young, talented woman, and she's, I'm so happy that we're finally sitting together. I've known her through her work because she's been translating, helping me translate some of the materials that I was struggling with, and she's also an author, and the book that she published, I'm purchasing today, by the way, you can purchase that too. Uh, it's called, what is it? What is it called? It's called Busker. Busker, yeah, and it's about her life, spending a life playing violin in Europe. Or, uh, she'll tell us about that. So I'm really, really happy to be here with you, Nisha Coleman. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was telling people that um, you're a translator, you're an author. So basically what you do, you work alone, right? Yeah, pretty much everything I do, every activity requires that I be alone. I mean, I'm a musician. I play violin. That's a lot of training by yourself. Um, I'm a translator that's done alone. I'm a writer, many hours alone. Um, I'm a performer, which involves people eventually at the end product, but the process of working through the material, that's all done alone. So, yeah, my days are mostly st spent by myself. Yeah, don't you find that, like, lonely, or does it make you feel sad sometimes, or...? Well, I'm an introvert, so a lot of times I, I tell myself this is this is where I get my energy, and a lot of introverts feel that way, that they regenerate sort of their energy levels by being alone. But the risk is, of course, spending too much time alone, and there is a lonely factor, and sometimes it can creep up on you, because the more time you spend alone, the less inclined you are to go out. So I know that about myself now, that it's a real tendency to spend too much time alone and then when it's time to be social I seem to I like lose I feel like I lose my social skills and I don't even really feel like I can connect with people and that's when I'm alone and I feel like oh there's a get together tonight but I don't really feel like going like I lose the ambition to, to yeah. connect with people and I know that that's not the best thing and I have to be careful about that oh so what do you do when it happens then Well, I have to kind of acknowledge that it's happening first. So, so if you have a rough day or you wake up and you feel like, oh, I don't feel so good today or I'm not inspired or I'm grumpy or... Yeah, I mean, that, those kind of days, they just happen and sometimes it's not for any reason. You can just wake up and it's just not a good day. And so what I do, it, what I'm trying to do, I'm still learning to do this, is I acknowledge, okay, I'm not feeling that great today. And even that small step of acknowledgement helps me to step out of it. So I'm not completely in the badness of that moment. And then I know myself enough to acknowledge that I have the tendency to isolate myself even more when I'm feeling that way. Mm. And that the right thing to do, even though I have to push against a lot of resistance, is to reach out to mm. other people. And it doesn't mean to call and complain that I'm having a bad day. It just means, like, send a text to somebody, ask how they're doing, or, like, have a coffee with a friend. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to sink them into your bad day. It means, like, you can get out of your bad day just by hanging out with somebody that you enjoy spending time with. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, that's brilliant. So this way you don't involve the, the other person in your lousy mood or in your sadness you just reach out for them for them to bring their light into your life is that yeah i feel like light is contagious yes and so 
I, I, and so is darkness. So if I invite somebody for a friend, like if I invite a friend for coffee, and I'm just super down, and I insist on being down, I'm going to drag them down. But it doesn't mean not acknowledging how I'm feeling either. It's kind of a balance. So you're, I'm not denying that I'm not feeling well, but I'm also not insisting that I stay in the bad yeah. mood. So it's, it's, a, it's a tricky balance, and it's when I'm still learning. But I find that even just connecting with a friend on sort of a neutral plane can help just neutralize the mood. Ah. You know? And then you, you can even laugh about about the bad feelings. Or you can you can get into like complaining mode and it can just be kind of funny, you know, like, oh everything's going wrong today. And you can sort of get it off your chest but not in like a sucking all the energy and light away. So I find that there, it's a tricky balance, but it's one that I'm learning more and more. That's very clever. I really, really like that attitude because it's you're acknowledging the fact that it's meh, bleh. It's like that, but you're not staying with it. Yeah. I think the trick for me is knowing myself enough to know my tendencies and which ones are not helping me. So if I'm just staying alone and, and if a friend invites me to go somewhere and I say no, I don't feel like it, which I have done in the past, I just would say, well, I don't want to bring them down, but I, it doesn't have to be that way. And then you're right, it becomes like this downward spiral of like, then I feel even worse. And it doesn't make them feel any better if I don't hang out with them. Um, so yeah, I think the real trick for me is going against all my tendencies to self-isolate and just be out in the world. And sometimes that can even be out in a coffee shop like this. It's just like being connected with other humans because that's the way we're designed. And I think introverts can sometimes fall into a trap of being like, no, I, I need to be alone, I need to be alone, I need to be alone. And then it becomes a hindrance. Yeah, and, and then not... you can't stand anybody else. <laughs> yeah, and then you become intolerant to other humans yeah. and it's just... You know, it's. I feel it sometimes happening to me, and I have to step in and like save myself from myself. And I see it happening with other people too. I mean, we all know those people who are are just um, have been isolating themselves for too yeah. long, and then they just they don't get comfort out of human. And you kind of lose the ability to communicate at a certain point because you feel like uh, I'm I'm safe. I don't want to. I don't want people to know me or to see me or to talk to me. I'm just safe here in my zone. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a trick of the mind that's playing, seeing that you're safer when you're alone. And to an extent, that's true, but not really because we we absolutely that's not normal. That's not yeah, life. That's not the way that that we're built. On the inter in, inter so what's, yeah, we're we're, we're we're linked. linked. Inter, yeah, we're all linked in a social way and um, and I think yeah particularly introverts can fall into that trap because they think no I'm not designed that way other pe extroverts are that way and introverts are this way so I'm meant to stay alone and um, yeah I'm trying to get out of that more and more because after I see people it's always this funny thing I'll feel like no 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 and I'm pushing 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 against resistance and then I finally do something Even something as simple as like going to a cafe for a couple of hours, I always feel better. Mm. I always feel better. So you step out and you just do it and, and then, oh, the, I love it because this is action. You're not staying. You're not trying to change the way that you feel or, or think. You just acknowledge that and then you go. You do something. Yeah. I don't always succeed, but that's kind of, it's a journey, I think. And so more and more... Um, I acknowledge the resistance for what it is too because I feel like no I don't I don't want to go um, but I know that that's just resistance and that it's not helping me and so if I can push past that bad feeling which is like another bad feeling on top of the already bad feeling then I get to the better feeling you know what well, I think that it's very interesting because some people would say that you have to respect yourself when you feel like I don't want to go I don't want to go then you are respecting yourself not going but what you say is that you actually know that when you start doing that then you're going downwards in a spiral and you're going to be stuck there because the less you see people the less you want to see people and the more 
you you go and see people so, the better you feel most of the time. So it's it's really interesting because you do respect yourself. You do acknowledge the fact that you're feeling like that, and yeah. you do respect yourself. But in in that in another way, it's just. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of different voices kind of contradicting in, in those moments. So it's like, what is, what is really myself? Is myself the voice that's saying, stay alone, don't call any of your friends? Yeah. Probably not. Like my real, real self, which is a little bit buried by the strong voice that's like, stay alone. My real self is probably yearning for human connection. And so I have to like be smarter than the, the strong voice that's saying stay alone hmm. and then that voice will get smaller the more that I resist against that voice but it truly is a battle and, and it's a journey because you have to sort of acknowledge that yourself is made up of many different parts and some of them are trying to protect you but maybe not serving you in the right way This is so clever. I love it. Thank you for sharing that with us, Nisha. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about our programs, services, retreats, trainings, and all sorts of tools to bring more laughter and joy in your life, visit us at www.yogadurir.com and for the women's laughing at hahasisterhood.com. Until next time, keep smiling and laughing. <laughs>